Hi, it's Nita. Hey, since this episode was published yesterday about this time of day, I have had a massive, massive 24 hours that I have to share with you guys. So even though, even though like I've edited my podcast and I'm putting this at the beginning, there is a part two. So when you get all the way to the end of this, I, if you want to hear what happened next in a crazy, terrifying, like growth kind of way, there's one part that's just so terrifying. Oh my gosh. Uh, be sure to catch part two, which I will be recording and publishing uh, today. Today's January 31st, 2023. So listen to part one and don't miss, do not miss part two. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And as always, I absolutely love you and appreciate you. Enjoy the podcast. Hi. Oh, it's been a moment. <laughs> so glad to know that there are souls out there who want to show up with me. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. I left off on my last episode uh, talking about some affirmation work and we're going to, we're going to skip the affirmation work for right now. Cause I want to bring you up to date on all the things that have happened while the podcast had to get set to the background. The concussion healing has been really progressing massively. And to be honest, that had to take precedent over everything else in my life, except being a mama, right? Being a mama, I was born to be a mama. <laughs> but the concussion uh, recovery is going strong and well. I am two days away from one year since state of injury. And the amount of growth, uh, personal growth, family growth, my children and I, that we have gone through is, oh my gosh, such a beautiful blessing. Okay, the concussion has been the most devastating and difficult injury I have ever climbed out of. And it, it, it's a mild brain injury for fuck's sakes. I mean, what's not gonna really suck and be hard when you lose some of your uh, just basic functionality, right? <clears throat> so just to touch base, if you listened to the podcast episode about the concussion. It talked about some affirmation things that were coming forward soon. And I was going to be talking about that. It promised a podcast delivery schedule that to be honest, none of that, none of those things that I wanted to do fit into my recovery from the concussion appropriately or safely. So all of those things had to get rearranged and set to the back burner. And you know what? I am really happy about that. I am really proud of my ability to put healing first. When you have a life altering injury, that the survival and climb out of that comes first. You give your time, yourself time to rest and never quit. So asking for forgiveness and patience on that. And I know that you'll give it to me because you're amazing. You are amazing. Today, I want to talk about something. Uh, I don't even know how to explain what happened. Way back, way back in 2020, I was diagnosed with PTSD. And I have worked, oh my God, insane insanely hard to understand it, to <clears throat> be aware of it, to know what's going to activate it and to how to, how to get through it when it's activated and box it back up. So from 2020 to, um, middle of the, well, beginning of the concussion, the concussion just threw the lid off of it like a confetti cannon and the PTSD activated much to my ignorance. 
But the mental health aspect of my concussion recovery forced me into therapy with a new therapist. And I think I talked about that in my last episode. <clears throat> the work that I've done there has taught me even more about the PTSD and even pointed out and educated me that some things that I didn't realize was like, a, a, I'm using my finger like a wave, you know, like these thought to action in my body, like my nervous system reacting, that that was a PTSD wave. I didn't associate that. So I've learned even more through the work that I have been doing and, and the classes that I've been taking. So when yesterday, when my PTSD unpacked itself and blew up, I was, I'll be honest, I was a little bit surprised. I knew what was happening. I could not stop what was happening. Uh, my kids were not home at the time. And the PTSD, the, the lid just flew open. And I'll tell you why. Let me back up and tell you why that happened. Now I packed it all back up. My nervous system, I'll be honest, my nervous system is a little beat up today. I, I can feel, you know, when you get into fight, flight or fawn, like, right, your whole nervous system just goes like, <gasps> like I'm a, um, what would you call like a, I'm trying to think like a deer getting chased by a mountain lion, right? And that deer just goes like every muscle in its body goes to run, right? So my nervous system is kind of fluctuating automatically between, you know, calm and peaceful. And then I'll hear a weird noise <clears throat> and my nervous system will go to like, Ooh, deer going to get eaten. <laughs> and, and I'm going to just sprint the hell out of there. So I'm still pretty aware of how bad of a PTSD episode yesterday was. <clears throat> and that surprised me because I haven't had one that bad in a very, very, very long time. So I'm interested to unpack that with my therapist tonight. I will be thankful to learn whatever I can learn from him. He's brilliant. And I know he will have something profound to teach me. And that is one of the things, I'm going to get a little sidetracked here. That is one of the things that's so important is to normalize reaching out for help, normalize therapy normalize coaching, normalize mentorship, normalize taking self-help courses, taking um, books and doing the work inside the book, and then discussing that with a group maybe, or somebody else who's done the book, right? Or contacting the author. The reality is we do not have the answers. And if we're coming out of a lifetime of generational trauma, we do, I can't, I can't even stress that we do not have the answers, right? We don't. And just because one technique worked this day or this month or this year doesn't mean it's always going to work for you. So when you are breaking free of generational trauma, so for me being born into a active uh, active, unhealthy home, being born into that, I, my normals from birth up are shaped by that. Now there's absolutely nothing that I can change about that except me. All I can do is educate myself and deprogram myself and open myself up to safe, independent, self-regulated, self-aware. Those are really imperative things. So I want to share something that just came to me. When I said earlier, like I haven't had a PTSD attack this bad, right? Because it, it, it really derailed me. And it dawned on me, it dawned on me that I don't know if that's true or not, that statement that I haven't had a PTSD attack this bad. Um, 
And the reason I don't know that is again, back to the concussion. With the concussion, being in a completely dysregulated brain injury body, the two things are not working, <clears throat> with constant active PTSD, it's almost like for months, I was inside of a PTSD attack, recovering from a brain injury. So I just want to give myself a little, I suppose, um, benefit of the doubt that all the work that I've been doing, all the work that we do, it actually does pay off. And I'm not going to self, uh, I was going to say self cranky. <laughs> I'm not sure if that makes sense to anybody outside of me. <laughs> so I'm not going to not give myself the credit of the work that I've been doing, right? This, this was a bad PTSD attack. It wasn't the worst. And that is a testament to all the work that I've been doing. But again, got kind of sidetracked <clears throat> by the concussion. So Setting all of that aside, here is what happened yesterday. So Sunday, yesterday was a Sunday morning. I get up, no kids at home. They are at their dad's for the week. And so my renters are here in their own areas of the property and home. <clears throat> so it really is just me and the dogs, right? It's as, it's as close to just me and the dogs as it's going to get. And the cat and the cat. Now the cat is critical to this story. So I get up and I wander into the bathroom, I do my little morning thing. And the cat is in the bathroom, but she's acting a little weird, right? She is acting a little weird. And I'm a little like a little weirded out because I'm like, Oh my God, what's wrong with the cat? What is she doing? And she was kind of sniffing around and stalking around the bathroom. And the next thing I know, she has chased a mouse out from behind a cupboard. And it is now running around the bathroom. And I am freaked the fuck out, right? Like not at all what I was prepared for in my morning, right? I was so dialed into let's get a cup of coffee. Let's relax. <laughs> let's, you know, get, get my work done right? It's a massive production day without kids there. And now I am dancing around the bathroom, screaming and fighter or flight or fawn has totally taken over. And this microscopic one inch mouse and a cat just toying behind it, right? Just enjoying the show that it's creating is, is, uh, like this is, this is now ruling my moment. I am literally in fight or flight and I dance around the bathroom and then I skip out of the bathroom and I shut the door behind me. Now the cat's litter box, her food, everything is in that bathroom. That's like her space. So it is a space and I live out in the country. So sometimes critters get in our house uh, it is a space that I've always considered ultra safe because the predator lives in there, right? I mean, I should feel really, really fucking safe in that bathroom. And all of a sudden, all my safety is just gone. Yes, I know it's just a mouse, but we're not going to make fun of me or tease me. We're going to like support me through this. Okay. And I am spiraling. Now I'm not spiraling as much a minute and a half later uh, about the mouse as I am about the state of my life, right? All of a sudden the, the confetti can top flies off and I am in full on, um, no, that's not quite true. I climbed, I climbed to full on panic PTSD. Uh, I sent a text to the renters, just uh, making sure everybody kind of knew we had this little problem and that I was going to make sure and see when uh, the pest control people were going to come. 
for any of you who might have picked up on the noise, I do have kids home now and there is some activity happening downstairs and I had to check on. Anyway, <clears throat> I, I send out this text and the response that I get back really just hits me. It's, oh my God, it's just, you know, don't ask the wrong people for understanding. And I know that lesson. I know that lesson. I am not safe with certain people in my life. But the problem is those people that I'm not safe with are the very people who are supposed to love me, cherish me, respect me, value me, honor me, choose me, right? So there's still that tiny bit of crossover disconnection there because they're incapable of doing that. So the messages that I get back or the message that I got back um, <clears throat> really just dragged me, like pop the can lid open of PTSD and through this net, through my nervous system that went from this moment with the mouse all the way back through my life. And it activated that <clears throat> fear, fear of disobedience, fear of being me. When you have, I'm 53 years old, right? 50 fucking three years old. And I am just now breaking free of generational trauma. When you stand up for yourself, it is not going to be easy because you were standing up for yourself against the very people that you submitted to for five decades, however old you are, right? It's hard. It is really, really hard. And yet it is incredibly the right course and the freeing course. What happened It, that PTSD lid flew off because of the mouth, right? I was all of a sudden caught into, you know, an unsafe spaces, spaces of disrepair, uh, shame because there's a mouse in my house. Um, you, that feeling of poverty, feeling of, I am never going to make it. I am never going to make it feeling of missing the narcissistic microscopic droplets of affection or attention, that tiny little speckle, what does my therapist call it? Ah, scraps. He calls it scraps of support, scraps of attention, scraps of love. I missed the scraps so fucking bad. It's like a fucking addict, right? I missed the scraps because the scraps of attention, affection, love, care, concern would have addressed the mouse. But in breaking that, it's now just me. It's just me. So I have, I have barricaded the cat in there <laughs> in my head is like the first line of defense. Like, right. That's what cats are supposed to do. Chase it, eat it, like destroy it. Um, I cast a little net out to my support network, just my support network that I knew didn't have, you know, Sunday dates happening. Um, and, and I, I was received well, right? And it's interesting too, who doesn't show up in those moments, right? I mean, that kind of tells you everything you need to know. If you were a little bit on the fence about something with somebody's um, relationship, male or female, and they don't show up, well, what's your clear answer, right? And so I also got a clear answer yesterday. And that was kind of interesting and good, but I missed like everything in me went to like severe 
holy fuck, what am I doing? What am I doing in my life? How am I ever going to succeed alone? Everything in me went back, flipped all the way. The pendulum flipped all the way back, which is an interesting thing because that hasn't happened like that in quite a long time. And I literally sat shaking, hiccup crying, tears streaming in puddles down my face, my entire head to toe, like every cell in my body is at a spot of where is the attack going to come from? Where is it going to come from? And in, in my reality, I'm blaming that on the mouse, right? Cause I don't know where the mouse is, although I know it's in the bathroom and the door is shut, but in my head and in my PTSD activate itself, I'm going to get attacked from every direction. So I have to be hyper vigilant. So it takes me a smidgen of time to realize what's happening. And then I flip and I'm like, okay, now I know what's happening. I have to deescalate. I need to put some tools in front of me. And I looked at this picture that's been on my wall and I bought this picture in most likely 2020, maybe 2019, but I think 2020. And it said, uh, hello, love. Hello, love. Yeah. Hello, love. I love that saying. I just loved it. And so I bought this picture to, to basically hang by my bed and wake up to, because nobody in the world's telling me hello, love. <laughs> right. And the one person who I thought was going to tell me that didn't happen. So I was telling myself that, and that picture has been pissing me off for a long time through this concussion. I feel like it's just fucking mocking at me now. And I had decided long ago that I wanted to re um, like basically paint over the picture or do something over the picture. So in this moment of trying to self-regulate, I see that picture and I realize hello love is just pissing me off, right? Because I now love myself. I no longer need that daily reminder. It's now a reminder of who isn't showing up for me. And that's multiple people through my life, right? So if anybody's listening to this and they're having a guilty moment, I, I don't know what to tell you. Like I've, I've forgiven everybody. Um, and I have forgiven myself mostly, but at the end of the day, I couldn't look at that anymore. So I threw it on my bed nicely, got out my pastels and I just started literally like on the back, uh, you know, on the, on the background of it in colors that are the colors of the, of the sunset or sunrise. So very pretty colors. I'm literally writing fuck, 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 fuck everywhere. And then I start making uh, coloring it in, making it into a scene. And now I'll eventually I'll post a picture of it on my, my site on my page, but now it no longer says hello, love. It is a lake with um, kind of a sunrise or sunset, depending on how you look at it. And a really big blacked out pine tree in the front, maybe a Douglas fir tree. So it's silhouetted and you see the lake and you see a little mountain scene and you see the, the beautiful sky back there in the distance. If you look really closely, you can still see hello love. So now I'm thinking I'm probably going to burn it, right? I'm probably going to eventually take that repurposed image and burn it, which is fine, which is absolutely fine if that's what I choose to do. It'll be very cathartic, I think. Anyway, so I, I repurpose, re art, uh, what do you call it? Pastel. I don't know what the word for pasteling things is, but but I, I draw and pastel and blend this picture to life. And it takes me, I don't know, an hour, hour and a half. All of a sudden I have this insane craving for light, sunlight with the concussion recovery. I had to darken my room massively, like literally no natural light was coming in, um, except for around the, um, covers that I put up in the windows. 
So I take down all of those cardboard covers, uh, like poster board covers, and I open the curtains and sunlight floods into the room. I open the door, sunlight and fresh air floods into the room. I'm now grounding to nature. And for the first time, it's been about a week and a half though. <clears throat> so for the first time in my room, but about this week and a half, natural sunlight was not killing my concussion brain, my injury, right? It wasn't deepening the injury. So I felt like incredibly blessed, incredibly blessed that I could enjoy this moment in my room because I really did not have the energy in me, nor did I want to risk running into anybody who's going to further the PTSD attack. So I get myself down to a, like, you know, a decent space. Um, I'm still crying some off and on when I, it's, it's not, I don't even know how to explain it, but if you've ever had a panic attack, if you've ever had a PTSD attack, an anxiety attack, you'll understand it's irrational and you can't stop. And when you stop, you dip back in and you're grieving. There's just so much. There's so much over five fucking decades to break free of. It, it, it's insane. I mean, it, it is so painful and so needed to be able to process all of that stuff. So I hear the cat in that bathroom, right? And she's, she's doing her cat thing. And of course, I still find it highly terrifying. Um, at some point, two of my boys come home. They're headed to a soccer event. And one of them, my youngest son, is a hunter. And I ask him. They can see, clearly see, like, I am in distress. My eyes are puffy, super beautiful, beautiful green. Like, when I cry, my eyes are the most gorgeous green color. Anyway, side note. Um, it's always a good. Okay? Always remember that. Look for the good. Right? So my eyes are gorgeous when I cry. Anyway, I ask him, you know, this is what's happened. Could you go take a look in there? So he says, yeah. So he goes into the looks and I go behind him, right? Like I'm being shielded by the child. <laughs> He's 16 and taller than me. We're okay. Anyway, so I'm shaking and he looks, he turns on the, the light on his phone and he looks all over, clears the room essentially, can't find it. But he turns around, he looks at me. And we come back out of the room. The cat leaves the room because she's tired of being confined in there. We shut the door again. And he just gives me the biggest hug. And I am crying. I cannot stop shaking head to toe. I'm terrified. Now, it's partially now because I really am afraid of that mouse, right? And then there's also some of that reality of being caught in your working through your mental health, right? So two of my kids are now home. They're seeing me at my weakest, not a new thing, right? When you are breaking a generational curse, you're, whoever you're pulling through it with you, they're going to see you at your fucking worst. And they're going to see you at that a lot. And you're going to grab onto each other and pull each other through a lot of really icky, muddy, 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 muddy stuff. You just get kind of used to it. So he wasn't scared or frightened. He was compassionate and kind. And he hugged me. And he said, it's okay, mom. And then he left. They left for their soccer thing. And I went back. And I stepped back from everything. And I took a break. I just gave myself permission to watch a movie. Now, yesterday, Sunday, without my kids here, <clears throat> on the weekends that I don't have kids home, I work. I and I am I am going to hit a deadline. You know, I have a huge um, work project launching February fifteenth. Go to yourinfinitynation.com, Click on alignment within, and you will see the project project I'm talking about. And right now you can get it 50% off with uh, online coaching. I mean, fabulous deal and a great precursor when you are 
just kind of starting to get out there in your healing journey, right? Because it's going to give you some tools and strengthen your resolve to keep moving forward. Anyway, back on track. I give myself permission to take a break. And so I watched a movie, got some food and put the dogs in and out, kind of reset, right? Then I came back, did some writing. Um, you know, I just kind of went up and down through my day, through the rest of my day. It was really this up, down, up, down, up, down. And I had two friends that really hit it out of the ballpark. One of them texted me back and was like, you're the cat. Just remember you're the cat. And he was right. Right. And then another one messaged back with this kind message, but it was a little bit, um, this is just a moment. And I pushed back on that friend and I said, yeah, this, I get that. I get that this is just a moment, but here's the thing with PTSD. It isn't one moment. It's fucking five decades of moments. It's five decades of all of the trauma and it's all active right now. So like I respect that this is just a moment, but I also know this moment is trying to kill me. It is trying to steal my ability to keep moving forward. So by this time in the afternoon, I have figured out that what is circulating through me now, as I strive to become independent and safe in myself, uh, regulate myself, like all of these things that healthy, safe individuals do, like, right, if you're born into a healthy, safe, love, understanding family, trauma-free family, or even trauma, but they know how to deal with trauma, right? If there's a sexual abuse as a child, it's not covered up and hidden. The child gets into therapy, right? The abuser doesn't still live with the family and normalize it, right? So we need to be realistic here. Families can go through really awful traumas and still have a safe, healthy system in place. Generational trauma families do not have that safe, healthy system in place. So that trauma just keeps like a tornado through the generations because nobody stands up and says enough. It ends here. And so yesterday, while I am that person standing up saying enough, it ends here. Yesterday, it hit me. The fear hit me. The fear of, uh, will I ever succeed? I'm not going to succeed. There's no way. On and on and on. That fear consumed me. Off and on through the whole day, I would just break down and cry massive, massive tears, painful tears, grief tears, fear tears, and shameful tears, just uh, tears for another life, a girl who no longer exists. And I couldn't fully shake free of it. I couldn't fully shake free of it. I, I didn't use that bathroom. I didn't go in that bathroom until the end of the day. And even then it was like zip, zip in and out. And I went in with a broom because I was so freaked out. And it was less about the mouse than about what the mouse represented in my life. The mouse represented my fear, my insane fear and going out and doing all these things independently. I did not jump into another relationship and go, this relationship is hurtful. It hurts my feelings. It makes me feel inadequate. It makes me feel too tall. It makes me feel like, you know, I'm, I don't fit. Like I'm a bad person or whatever, right? Whatever, whatever the, the thing might be. I paused there because I did, I have dated a little bit, right? So I have dated a little bit over the last 
four years, three years, however long it's been um, since separating, but I haven't, I haven't allowed a relationship to develop because if I recognize that if somebody doesn't respect my boundaries, if they don't see me, if they can't run with me in being a growth-based person who's fallible and accountable, they, they, they are, they're, we're not going to be a fit. So everything in me activated fear by that damn mouse and everything went to, but the scraps of attention were good. Are you sure you don't want the scraps of attention? Are you sure you don't want the leftovers? Cause you know, you had laughter sometimes you didn't have PTSD yet. I'm going to add the yet. There was this whole list of narcissistic, I'm, gonna, I'm using air quotes here, love that got you through. It sustained you. And I fucking missed it. Like a fucking addict of abuse. I missed it. And that was disgusting. That is a horrific truth that I bring to you. I missed having somebody who would swoop in and be the momentary hero and we would flip back into, you know, that, that hero and love bombing stage for a few months six to 18 months, likely, right? As it kind of pieced together yesterday, I allowed myself more rest. I watched one or two more movies. I immersed myself in between things when I felt solid and stable. And like, I understood what had happened. Um, I immersed myself in some work and that is the one lovely thing about me. <laughs> I produce really well, really beautiful, raw, gifted things when I'm battered. Right. And I allowed myself to immerse myself in some writing creativity, some work, some pushing some things out there. And it felt good. It felt right. I felt calm. So it was nice to go to my place of bliss and find calm because the work I am building is my place of bliss. That'll work out great when I can fully be funded financially independent off my place of bliss. Okay. So anyway, to recap, being kind enough to allow myself to rest and recognize all the fear that it activated and go, okay, this moment was a moment of fear. This isn't where I will live. I will not open up a relationship with anybody, the past, the present, or the future that does not respect my boundaries, see me, honor me, want to grow with me, cherish the crazy woman that I am and hold me accountable while being accountable themselves, right? Because I want somebody who's going to push me to be my best. Otherwise, what's the point? Okay. I feel exhausted. I really feel exhausted after putting this these vocal recordings together um, and talking about the mouse episode, the PTSD, the panic. Um, you know, I hung the picture up on the wall and I woke up to it this morning and I, I felt, I felt better. I felt better seeing that because that's just me. That's only me. And that's the thing that I've ran from my entire life. I have allowed other people 
and their voice and their needs to be more vibrant, more honored than my own. And that's what we have to stop doing. As hard as it is, we must stand in the fire of the creation that is there and say no more. It ends here. And we have to keep doing that and keep doing that and keep doing that. Now, I'm going to tell you, it is easier if you are doing that with a guide, with a therapist, a coach, and a, and not just any therapist, because you don't want a marriage therapist if you were breaking generational trauma. You don't. You need a therapist that is highly skilled, trained, educated, and versed in not only trauma, but your kind of trauma. For me, narcissistic abuse. Psychodynamic therapy was a secondary type of qualifier on that I looked for in and on finding my third therapist for a new therapy journey. Just remember that all of these tools are out there to help you, but you have to value yourself enough in order to reach out and invest in those tools. I started investing in tools, free tools first, right, through the internet. I read everything I could read, everything. And until it was safe, I didn't even start following things until I was physically, mentally, like, safer. And then I finally, I reached out for therapy and I started spending money on therapy, not only for me, but for my kids, because they had to unlearn what they knew. If you go way, way, way back in my podcasts, you're going to see where I talk about, I was raising victims or abusers. And I said that to my therapist the other night and he said, yeah, you were very few people take a look at their life so deeply to admit that you are ultimately responsible for the belief patterns and outcomes of your children in that respect. In, in that respect, I am re referencing specifically generational patterns. We cannot learn something that we simply have never known about. Some of the ideas that my therapist has introduced to me while I've read about them I've never applied them. I didn't have the skill set to apply them to my situation. So therapists uh, trained in your need are going to be able to help you maneuver like nobody else. They're going to be your safe zone for learning new things. So that when a mouse is loose in your house, you have some tools to deal with that. So the tools that you have that you surround yourself with are vital to recovery from generational trauma. Yesterday, if I hadn't had the plethora of tools, if I hadn't done all the work that I've done, yesterday would have lasted a week long, two weeks long. Instead, it lasted a few hours. And while my nervous system still feels the effects of it, I'm fine. And I know I'm fine. I know I'm safe. A lot of dealing with PTSD is taking yourself out of it, connecting with the real world, uh, be that nature, drawing, writing, connecting with the feel of living in this moment right here, taking yourself out of the past, right? Putting yourself in the present. I have nothing to fear because I keep doing the work and it, Always, when I look backwards, always, when I show up for me and I do the work for me, I succeed. I succeed. I have stood in the unknown since 2019, the beginning of 2019, I have pushed into the unknown and I keep showing up for myself and standing up for myself and I keep succeeding. So I will not stop now. When PTSD gripped me, I literally reached out for every single tool that I had automatically. It wasn't even like I had to stop and think about it. Just this one came, that one came, this one came. And I moved forward. 
And if you're listening closely, you can hear the squeaky toy going off for Maggie, the bionic dog. <laughs> Her children's book is a uh, happily in editing. It's been there for a while because of the concussion. And I, I will in 2023 be pushing out my first children's book. So I'll keep you guys informed of that. Thank you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. I deeply appreciate you.